Hi, my name's Phil. I like to talk about politics. And do you know another thing? I like maths as well. And the winner for the poll for today was about how the government are effectively fiddling unemployment. So let's take a look at a bit of maths, a little bit of history. I want to have a look at how the government fiddles the unemployment figures. So in a report last year, the ONS said that there were 32.4 million people in work, 8.64 million people of working age who were economically inactive. In other words, not earning anything. So a simple addition gets you that there's 41.04 million people of working age. So the economically inactive people as a percentage of that, in other words, number of people who are unemployed because they're not employed, would be 21%. So 21% unemployment in the country. But the government was saying that 7.23 million of those people were not even looking for work. So that means your base for unemployment would be 17.6%. An unemployment rate of 17.6% means that everyone who wants a job has one. So the real one, of course, would be higher. Uh, but if you're saying it's lower than that, then you're basically saying that people who don't need a job and don't want a job still have one anyway, somehow. So claiming the unemployment rate to be 4% is suggesting that you've actually got less than 0.0% unemployment. It's literally saying, like I said, that you've got millions of people who don't want or need a job that have one anyway. But, of course, that's not how unemployment is calculated. It is the number of unemployed people, the ones who are classed as unemployed, the ones who are looking for work but don't have work, as a percentage of the total number of people who want employment, including those who have it. Now, that's fair enough, you might say. Why bother to include people who don't have a job and don't need one? Oh, absolutely. And indeed, you know, some people are housewives or husbands or whatever you'd call the non-married equivalent. Some are lottery winners. Some just retired early. Uh, you might be a full-time student, for example. There's any number of reasons why people would not need full-time employment. In other words, there are people who are not economically active, but they're not looking for a job either. And as I said, the figures put that at 7.23 million. Now, excluding them is quite reasonable, except how many people really think of that when looking at the figures. But then there's another issue I'm going to come to. Now, if that was my entire argument, if that's what I was going to base this on, then that would just be really boneheaded, pedantic rant about definitions. However, even going by the government's own system, the unemployment figures are massively distorted downwards. The real unemployment rate, far from being the best for generations, which is what the government claim, is actually believed to be three times higher than they are claiming. For example, you or I might consider that the unemployed tag should be referred to, uh, used to refer rather to someone who doesn't have a job but is actively seeking one of working age. But it doesn't. That's not the definition of unemployment. People have been sanctioned, for example, and they don't count on those figures. They're dropped into the pile of people who are not economically active, but also not seeking work, even though it's untrue. The government are actually saying these people are not looking for work. And, and that's what I mean about how we calculate unemployment. Sure, it sounds reasonable to remove those who are not even looking a job for a job from the figures. But it also allows the government to fiddle it by dropping people who are looking for a job into that bucket. And they try and do it with as many people as possible. If it was simply a percentage of people without a job compared to the working age population, then any downward movement in the figures would potentially be cause for celebration uh, because it's much more likely to be genuine. It'd be a lot harder to fiddle anyway. And sanctioning has been on the increase during this last Conservative government. And it, and it goes beyond people who simply cannot work due to illness or injury having been taken off disability payments due to such rigorous medical tests as getting a civil servant to ask them to pick up a coin or to raise their arm to shoulder height. You know, uh, even if it's uncomfortable to do it, they are signed as fit to work if they can manage it. Never mind the qualified doctor who said otherwise, a smart young man in a tie who has a handful of GCSEs armed with their Department of Work and Pensions help sheet. They know best. Um, no, we're talking about job seekers who are taken off job seekers allowance. Being five minutes late for an interview, for example, will see you sanctioned for four weeks. Sure, you and I might query why anyone would be late for a meeting or an interview, but many people aren't used to routines due to being long term unemployed. So what we would consider simple is a challenge for some. A further sanction would be for three months and then three years. 
This has been annoying economists for some years because when you look at the productivity of the UK, the unemployment figures being claimed by the government simply didn't add up. You know, they tried to show this, this massive cascade of falling unemployment. And the economists were looking at the productivity of the country going, uh, no, where are, where are they working? Because the productivity of the country doesn't seem to be going up in step with it. Um, you know, in a situation like this, what was happening is it was discovered in 2014 that the government had basically removed about a million people from the unemployment figures. Not because they'd found work, just because the government had decided to classify them as not looking for work. Simple as that. Uh, and then in that situation, what you would normally do, what I certainly do, is you go to the Office for National Statistics. These guys present facts based on the data they are given, and they have actually had to tell off the government many times, with prime ministers and other ministers, for presenting false conclusions relating to official figures. But even the ONS struggles to make sense of it because the data, it comes from government departments. Now, it should be raw data. But under David Cameron, uh, the Department for Work and Pensions, whilst he was Prime Minister, sought to prevent their fiddles being exposed too easily by giving them incomplete data. So the ONS can only work with the data they're given. Um, and, after, and this fiddling of data, it's not just having an effect on what people think about the economy and therefore how they might vote. Going, oh yeah, the government's doing brilliantly on, on the labour market. It has a very real effect on people, whole families even, who as a result of these declassifications suddenly become homeless, can't afford rent, bills or food. Uh, there are well over a, a quarter of a million people in the UK homeless and that doesn't include homeless people who are sofa surfing or stuck in a, a spare room uh, to friends or families. They don't feature on the data at all. So the definition of unemployed has been fiddled. It's not what you would expect it to be, it's not what it should be. But they're working at the other end too with a misleading definition of being employed. So on a simple measure, we know that employment statistics are going to mislead many people anyway because people always think of figures as meaning the same thing. That's a failing on people's understanding of statistics and, and doesn't need any fiddling. For example, I am employed. I earn a wage that allows me to pay rent on a house, run a car, pay my bills, even have money left over for my hobbies, things like that. Um, you guys help me to earn more on YouTube as well. Thank you very much. Uh, so I, of course, appear on the employment figures. But so does someone who works a few hours a week, who can't afford to pay rent or bills or much food on the proceeds. But they count for one more on the employment figures, with equal weight to myself. In fact, digging into the figures, the number of people in part-time employment is 26.2% of the workforce. Now, that is classed as people working fewer than 35 hours a week. But there's no weighting on those figures. Someone working for one hour a week is classed the same as someone working 60 hours a week on the overall figures. If you're paid for one hour of work in the UK in any given week, then you are classed as employed. And, and due to zero hours contracts and the gig economy, um, many people who earn less than £10 a week are still classified as employed. Made all the worse by unscrupulous businesses who charge employees for uniforms and other kit and are taking directly out of their wages. So they actually could be left with no wages at all. So even though they would still be getting some benefits because they're not really earning, they don't feature on the unemployment statistics. In one sense, it makes sense. If you have a job, then, well, you're not unemployed, are you? That fits our binary notion of employment. But it's also common sense that someone working one hour a week on the minimum wage of £8.21, if you're above 25, and may have to even pay bus fare to actually get to that job, you're actually as good as unemployed financially. In fact, worse off if you actually have to pay travel to this ratty job for one hour a week. And that's another area where the Department for Work and Pensions are not helpful. We don't know how many people are only earning £10 or £20 a week. We only know that over a quarter are working less than those full-time hours. So the figures for unemployment are artificially reduced by fiddling and the figures for employment are high, highly misleading in the other direction. Um, so no wonder economists were so confused until it all came out. This is why the Office for National Statistics should get only raw data from the government departments, not process data. Let them do the processing of the data like they normally would. That way, both they and other interested parties, such as myself, can get to the truth of matters. 
even freedom of information requests don't help in this case because they'll just send you the process data. The raw data would need personal information redacting, of course, and they won't do that. So there we go. That hopefully sheds a little bit of a light onto the nonsense, which is, I suppose, any government statistic, uh, but certainly the unemployment, which is highly fiddled. I uh, hope you found it interesting. If you did, don't forget to click the like button, subscribe for further content, click the bell notification as well. Until next time, I'll see you later.